morning. So, here we are almost at the end of uh, the, the lectures and uh, I usually talk uh, sometimes uh, more than once on a particular topic for clarifications, okay, because sometimes I may forget some points and all that. So, let us see. So, we talked about this is a single head, single tail amplified, okay, and this could be single tail, not single tail, two tails and one head group. And as you know that Krypton, so let me like a cartoon of Krypton. Krypton, we have three tails and three tails and one head, head group. Now, first of all, I will tell you few things. This single head and single head and single tail and single head and two tails, they can form both micelles. So, these two, these two can form both micelles. and reverse micelles. Micelles and reverse micelles. Now, when they will form a micelle, they will form micelle in solvents of high polarity. Remember, micelle is this. Micelle means outside you have head group that is hydrophilic in character and inside you have hydrophobic. This is the structure. Okay, some something like this. I did not put all around. So, this is the structure of a micelle. What we see is, well, maybe I will uh, put so that there could be some solvent molecules inside that is very small, which is whose property will be different from outside solvent, bulk solvent. Okay, this micelle, this forms micelles because you see the you see the outside outside is hydrophilic in character so solvent of higher polarity like in water if i put this amplifier in water then what will happen these hydrophobic tails will try to be away from water because water is a water has very high dipole moment high polarity liquid all right. So, it will try to avoid water, that is why it will be inside and outside is the hydrophilic, uh, hydrophilic part, which is in contact with the solvent. Okay. So, this forms in high polarity solvent. And this interaction with high polarity solvent will have some enthalpic gain. Although we lose some entropic, entropic energy, why? Because entropy will be slightly negative, because it was random, from randomness it has some order. Okay. And remember that this is like a ball. If you cut a ball, suppose you have a rubber ball. Okay, I cut a slice, then I will see this, then what I will see? I will see a circular plate, okay, a rubber ball, suppose a solid rubber ball, 
then I see a C A circular plate. So, this is like that, this is only a section of the micelle, but a micelle is spherical or almost spherical in shape ok. And therefore, what will happen to the solvent of low polarity like say hexane, toluene ok, those kind of stuff. What happens? The it will be reverse of this means this is outside and hydrophilic hydrophilic part is inside. hydrophilic part is inside here the hydrophilic part is inside because it is trying to avoid trying to avoid the solvent of low polarity but solvent of low polarity likes this hydrophobic part because hydrophobic they interact very that is called hydrophobic effect that, that is a strong attractive uh, interaction and there will be enthalpic gain ok. But like before we have entropic loss. So, like my cell reverse my cell reverse my cell is also spherical in nature and so we are looking at a section of the reverse my cell. So, this will form in low polarity solvent. Okay. So, this will be low polarity solvent. Okay, that is what I say that it will be like hexane or you can say toluene things like that ok. Now, when I said that the krypton was a single head group and three tails ok. Let me draw it for the sake of completeness. Okay. So, look at this, how this was N H, I replace that N H by carbonyl and then there is, I should write little bit down because it is So, this, this hydrophobic tails they are sort of forced down ok. If we have no carbonyl this then what would have happened? Same thing ok. What would have happened? If I then it will be straight this will be straight and this will come straight outside. That means, three hydrophobic tails are on three sides, then it will not tend to form a vesicular structure, but it forms a vesicular structure because the carbonyl, the carbonyl group property of carbonyl because this is this has to be carbon is 
this carbon it will co come down little bit here because of the valency and its geometry and then it will be like this is a 120 degree almost. So, it will be bend like that it will not be 180 like this straight, but it will be 120 means it will be going down then it is going down down. So, all these I have placed these hydrophobic tails towards one side. Okay. So, they are like one side. So, therefore, this is one and another will come from here. So, it will become unilabellar. I said that what is the vesicular structure? vesicular structure can be unilamellar or multilamellar. Unil, unilamellar will be like this, this, okay. so this way it is coming completely sphere spherical. So, this will come this way and this way and then if it folded around then it will uh, and these are also these are not empty, but they are almost touching. So, it will be a sphere kind of that is unilamellar this is called unilamellar unilamellar. I have a huge syllabus that is why I tend to go a little bit fast. You may not uh, might have missed some of the important parts that is why I am doing slowly today. So, this is unilamellar. What is multilamellar? Multilamellar will be Well, it is two, but there will be multi, okay, n. So, if n such units are there, slowly, so there will be, I will tell you, have you seen onion? So, like an onion structure, in an onion, when you peel the top part, then there is another part, then you peel it, and that has a thickness, okay, that onion has a thickness. You imagine you imagine that onion peeling, peeling means it will come like this with some thickness. Imagine for a minute that it is not really up to this, but this is a sphere, okay, sphere almost. So, that sphere, the thickness, we say definite thickness, that thickness comes from here, this, this thickness. Then there is another layer, there is another layer, so on and so forth. So, this is a multilamellar, and if it is only one, if it is only one like this, then it is a unilamellar vesicular structures. And as these all these structures, these are three regular structures. So, uh, this was one of the first examples of single head and three tails. Can we make little bit more complicated? Yes, we can. We have done, we have done that too. I will draw it here. We have taken, it is a very involved synthesis. Hmm. So, from one here, one here and one here. This is a benzene moiety. Okay. So, here you have this krypton
krypton oxygen oxygen and here you have we always do with carbonyl carbonyl first of all it is easy you take carbonyl chloride carbonyl chloride will react with amine like a shot it will exothermic reaction is very fast so you have to carefully do it okay so you always do carbonyl so this is a carbon so this is this is one unit then then two unit two unit and then three unit so we have done we have done and it also forms vesicles okay it also forms vesicles okay so here how many six tails three head groups and six tails so these were not reported earlier before uh, it came from our lab so these things are this all these things forms vesicles as i informed last class also that i cannot draw vesicular structure nobody can draw vesicular structures but what i will do i will put in my lecture notes i have to put it somewhere so in that lecture note i will put the photographs because it is taken by tunneling electron microscopy by through tunneling electron microscopy you take the photograph of the uh, of the vesicles individual vesicles can be you can see with their size you can measure and etc so on and so forth okay so this is another one all right now i will tell you there are numerous uses of these materials in biology okay in biology what can you do i can put only one tail one tail is good enough and then in these two two sides i can put a suppose i can put a drug molecule or one group which will be attached by through intermolecular forces with a drug molecule and this has more accessibility it can go very close to the cell membrane cell membrane you also also know towards the cell membrane why because that hydrophobic will reach the hydrophobic close to that and it can really reach there by reaching and then the drug molecule can reach very close to the affected place i can put an antibody here and a drug molecule here or antibody drug molecule complex conjugate and that conjugate what does antibody do antibody will go to that antigen uh, to the go to that affected place because that is the antibody is anti to that so always it will go there it will not go here and there suppose i have some problem uh, in my stomach it is not going to end it up in my uh, back it will go exactly here because that antibody will take it all the way there and when it takes it there and then that means near the point where the, i need medicine it will reach that medicine that medicine will reach near there and what is the importance of this uh, hydrophobic they will allow closeness or uh, this thing all thing will go very close to the cell wall because cell wall is mostly hydrophobic in nature so hydrophobic goes to hydrophobic 
with this idea another thing has been done I will now show you this is another uh, example maybe another page this was done by Alan Sargeshan from from Australia it's called sarcophagine this kind of molecules my molecules are called krypton this is called sarcophagine okay so nh 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 Okay. Let me write n. If I write n, I cannot write so many. M e, okay, where n equal to greater than equal to five. This forms. Well, this uh, is done with a uh, template cobalt 3. I tell you about the template, usefulness of template synthesis in macrobicyclic, but let me tell you now, we can go back and forth and all these things, the entire syllabus. Cobalt 3 is, cobalt 3 is kinetically inert. Cobalt 3, cobalt 3 plus is D6, so octahedral cobalt 3, here is octahedral cobalt 3 D6, it is kinetically inert. inert. If you put this compound, cobalt 3 compound of this, in hydrochloric acid and keep it for 15 days, nothing happens because it is kinetically inert. Okay. Why? Because D5 system this is the electronic configuration of a D6 system D6 octahedral D6, okay, octahedral. So, it is kinetically inert. So, cobalt 3 stays there and how to get out of that? So, I, st I started talking about uh, template now, is okay. Cobalt 3, how you will get out of there? If you with hydrochloric acid, it is not going in 15 days, then you are in trouble. Then how to get out of there? You want this to get out because you want to put some other metal. The way to get out is, we have to reduce it. If you reduce cobalt 3 by zinc dust, then cobalt 3 becomes cobalt 2, cobalt 2 plus that is D7 and that is D7 means octahedral D7 will have electron here and that makes it kinetically labile kinetically kinetically labile kinetically labile so then it can easily get out get this out of this cavity okay that is not the uh, important thing important thing is cobalt 3 is here very nice and and very highly charged 3 plus Okay. When you put a charge near a vesicles or micelle, then what happens? When you put near vesicles or micelle or hydrophobic any 
for example, the cell wall, then that charge will decompose that cell wall or that micelle. If you have a the micelle, here is the micelle. Okay, I here is the micelle. All right. So I put a charge here. So how I put a charge here? Suppose I put a nickel two plus, nickel two plus, and I bring it near here. It will all disintegrate. It will all disintegrate like this. Completely disintegrate. Huh? So charge disintegrates. So this particular compound, this cobalt three compound, were treated with a. In pig, so people who you who eats pig, you know pig meat. Pig meat has some problem. Pig meat sometimes they can have some what do you call it worm. They have some worm. So if I human eat consumes uh, pig meat, then it will go inside, and that meat with the meat worm will also go inside. So that worm. Let me write this. It will be objectionable from many people, but say it is worm. Okay, this worm if it goes inside then you are in trouble, you will have lots of problem, health problem. But if you give this particular compound here, then this compound will come very close to this. Okay. Why? Because of this hydrophobic tail, hydrophobic and this is hydrophobic. So, they can be very close. If it comes close, close and then cobalt 3 plus cobalt 3 plus is closed, it will rupture everything. So, what will happen to this? This worm, this worm will be just broken into pieces, dies immediately. This will be dies immediately. So, that is what it is known as anthelmintic agent. This compound is known as anthelmintic agent. So, I told you one example of this anthel mintic agent. So, this one I could I should have told you about earlier, but does not matter this is all related everything is related. Okay. So, now after this I come to the, okay. so it will break. So, these things are very good. I have tried with our compound our compound not cobalt 3, but other metal. My student went there and did that, we did that immediately these worms die, they will immediately die. Okay. So, therefore, these things are anthelmintic agent. That means, charge will rupture, any charge will rupture this supramolecularly associated amphiphile molecules, that is the bottom line. Okay. Now, I tell you LB technique, LB technique I will finish today, LB technique. Okay. Langmuir Blodgett technique is the most, most effective way of depositing thin films onto solid surfaces with precise molecular dimension. So, we will do it today some aspects of this LB technique and how it is done except so on and so forth. So, my next talk would be on LB technique. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.